Right, hello, and uh, today's video, I'm going to um, hopefully go through my gear list from my recent uh, trip where I walked from Aviemore to Perth. I've had so many um, requests to go through it. I don't usually do this sort of stuff, but because there have been so many people asking about it, I thought I'd uh, do a quick video, hopefully a quick video, and go through it. And I'll go through, uh, I'll divide it into three sections. I'll go through my sleep system in the tent, what I was wearing, what kit I took uh, for walking and uh, the layering system I used, I suppose, and also my uh, my camping gear. And I might talk a wee bit about electronics towards the uh, end of the video as well. So let's start with the tent. I, I didn't take two tents with me, by the way. <laughs> I've just put them both up and there's a reason why I put them both up. One of them's got my summer gear. Another one behind me here has got my, uh, my, uh, my winter gear in it for the trip that I went on between Aviemore and Perth, it was April, and the forecast when I left was for some cold nights in the first two nights to drop below, I think it was minus two, minus three, and it certainly did freeze. So I'm glad that I took my, my winter system. So two tents I set up, one with the summer system, one with the winter system, because I'll tell you a wee bit about the summer system as well. And the tent that I use is the tarp tent, SCARP one, which you have to import from America. I don't think there's any dealerships in the UK that sell it. Yeah, I use it all year round. It's pretty sturdy. It's quite spacious inside. The, the floor mat area you can extend and retract to make your vestibule bigger or smaller as you wish. And I just find it a very, very good tent in all seasons and for the UK it's perfect. I did uh, reseal it and spray it with some waterproof fabric before I left. Just to make sure, I've never had any issues, any issues with it leaking. And the other thing I did, now if I can find it, um, this is, I've, I've done a video on this before and I should also mention, I'll maybe, whenever I've covered stuff before, I'll mention that they're in the gear link or the gear pair playlist, which I'll put in the link below uh, or the description below. The other thing I did before I left was I sprayed everything with permethrin spray. This is Life System spray, which uh, I bought just from Amazon. It does cost about 12 or 13 pounds per bottle. But I tell you what, I've not had a tick since I started spraying my clothes and what I usually do is I'll spray everything at the start of the, the spring and just spray it as I'm going out and when I'm needing it for topping it up and it's brilliant. Um, I'll put there's a video all about that in the gear list so if you want to know more about it go and have a look at that. So yeah, SCARP 110, it's, it's perfect. Um, again there's a link to a review I did on the SCARP 10, it's easy to put up, spacious and deals with quite a lot but unless I'm out in extreme weather and I ain't, I ain't going out in extreme weather um, to the top of a mountain, it's it's great. The sleep system that I used for the uh, the trip to Perth from Aviemore because it was cold was the uh, the thick winter mat here. This is the X-Bed, oh let me just check, uh, X-Bed 9LW I think. Anyway, it's the thick X-Bed, <laughs> long and wide version with uh, and it's downfilled. It does weigh a lot more then my summer system, which I'll come on to in a minute, and the sleeping bags are Rab Ascent 900, which is my winter bag, which was fine. In the first two nights, I really needed that. It was really cold, and I'm glad that I had the winter system. Had I been going in the summer, I would have taken what I've got in here, which is my Sea to Summit mat, Etherlite XT. Um, it's great, but not quite as warm. It's about a third or to a quarter of the of the size of the X bed, but. Uh, yeah, from now on in, through summer I'll be using that, and the sleeping bag that I use for the summer is the, uh, where is it? Sea to Summit Spark SP2, which uh, says it's got a lower limit of minus two, uh, so um, yeah, that's a summer bag. As I said, I'm glad I never took this. It might have been lighter, but I, I'm not ultra light and I'll come on to that. <laughs> later in the video. Um, I, I think there's things which you need to compromise on and one of them for me is definitely having a good night's sleep. If I wanted to go super light and had taken the summer mat and bag, I would have struggled to sleep because of the cold and I don't think that's a good thing. So that's um, that's the bag and the mat. The only other thing I would mention, a couple of things that uh, I use in the winter and I certainly used for the first two nights in this trip, was I took the silk liner. So I've got this, this is uh, it's actually an old one, a jerried First time we went to the Alps, suggested that I take a silk liner for the uh, the huts out there. This is actually an old Sea to Summit silk liner and that makes a big difference actually. There's been a few trips I've been out with the tent in the winter gear when it's been minus seven, minus eight. And having that just add, adds another couple of degrees warmth to the sleeping bag. So I took that with me. 
and I also took the two bottles that bottle, never drink out of that bottle if you're with me that's, uh, that's my pee bottle <laughs> and this one I bought I, after I, I had a fold away um, bottle which I was using as a hot water bottle but because it was plasticky um, or rubbery anyway it melted because the water was too hot so I got a, a rigid plastic one and I used that for two nights as a hot water bottle and it was great um, the one thing that I, I do do is I put the water in I'll give it a wee shake and I'll open the lid up to let the it, it builds up pressure you see um, I'll do that a few times just so that the lid doesn't become loose and leak like the, uh, the other one did <laughs> which is quite important so yeah that was the that was the sleep system I don't need the hot water bottle for the stuff in the uh, I'll take these shoes off actually for the stuff in the um, I'll come onto these as well in the summer um, so yeah that's the uh, that's the sleep system uh, well, I'll talk about the bag actually the bag that I use is the Osprey Ether Pro 70 again I've done a video about this you'll see in the gear um, list below fantastic bag no thrills not loads of different compa um, compartments it's just one big compartment which I like and then when I put everything in it I put everything in into dry bags like that um, and I do have a heavy duty dry bag this one here this is really thick and I put that inside and I put my sleeping gear into that one so the sleeping bag and the sleeping mat and my down jacket go into that and that keeps everything dry and then on top of that everything else is in their separate dry bags but I did notice the extra thing that I took with me on this trip was an outer uh, waterproof cover for the bag it's not actually a, <laughs> an Osprey one this is from my old bag and um, because what I found at the, when I did the West Highland Way in the winter when it was torrential I found that some of these bas bags here which say they're dry bags the water was getting into them so in addition to having everything in a dry bag I now put this um, rain cover on the outside of the the bag just as an extra bit of protection because you don't want anything to get wet that's for sure so yeah if you want more information on the the bag go and have a look at the the review I did on the on it in the gear list which is fine so um, yeah so that's the, the sleeping systems uh, what will I talk about now I think I'll talk a wee bit about yeah just uh, sort of different camping bits and bobs that I've got with me so I use the, uh, the jet boil which is uh, it's an old one I've got it's not got the uh, it's not got the uh, the clicky ignition on it it's just uh, yeah basically I have to use a, a lighter or a, a flint to to get it uh, going and I'm glad that I've got this because this uh, butane lighter has sometimes failed me when it's been cold because I haven't taken it into the um, yeah, into the um, into the tent with me because if it gets cold, then it doesn't work. And that's the other thing with the uh, with your gas bottles. When is it here? These um, sometimes if you take these into the tent with you, they'll work a bit better in the morning, which is fine. Um, yeah, so it's just a basic stove, uh, jet boil works all right. I, I do fancy one of the ones where you can get the the wee stand which goes separate and so it's low to the ground. But you know what? This works fine, and I've, you know, I've never needed to, to change it, and it's quite um, yeah, it's quite reliable. It does what it does. It's a bit high, and it can be a bit wobbly, so I have the legs on it, which uh, which help keep it stable. So that's the jet boil. Um, not much else to say about that. Long spoon, spork. Sometimes it's very <laughs> very useful to have. And also, uh, I'll talk a wee bit about the the bags that I, I took with me as well, and the food at the end of the video. So in terms of food, well, it's <laughs> That's just, yeah, I think I talked about that, the flint. In terms of food, uh, ev evening meals, I use these expedition foods. Thanks to Ray from RS Outdoors, he introduced me to these and they're, um, they're dried foods, so they take up less weight. And um, I think I had four of those, no, I had five. I had one extra just in case um, I was like, you know, I was behind schedule or anything happened and I needed extra food. In terms of other food, I'd, oh, it was things like bars of Snickers, flapjacks. In the first few days I had... Um, Scotch eggs <laughs> and a, a selection of sausage rolls and pork pies. Uh, you can only keep them for a couple of days, obviously. And I had um, for coffee, I had the uh, sashes, the, the two-in-one sashes where you just add the water for coffee in the morning, and that was that was about it. And obviously, that on that on that trip, I had to take about three or four days worth of food because there was nothing until I got to Dunkeld, um, so the bag was quite heavy. Uh, the other thing that I've got is the Catadine Bee Free water filter, which is great. I used to use a Sawyer one, but I find these are a bit better. I've had to replace a couple, but uh, I think they're about 40 quid. 
but they're so quick and so useful. Um, they're great. So, yeah, that's um, that's my stove and stuff like that. In terms of, let's move on to the oh, and my platypus. With um, yeah, they just like having a platypus. It's just easier to to drink out of. It saves you having to stop and get a bottle out and drink and what have you. Right. Um, I did have these shoes, these were my luxury item, these are just clogs and they're, they're furry inside and I wear them all the time, they're really good, they're completely, they're not waterproof but they don't have holes in the top and they were great round about camp just to get my feet out of the boots um, I picked these up for £15 off Amazon so, and I also took them just in case I needed to put a different pair of shoes on for the river crossings which I didn't need to do but nice and light, quite cosy, very very comfortable Right, what did I wear? Right, let's start from the bottom up. I wore my sort of slightly more rigid boots, which I think I kind of regretted, to be honest with you. I think I could have got away with my lighter summer ones, but these were the Saliva, 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 <laughs> Saliva Crows, and they're great. But maybe a wee bit too rigid, especially when I was doing a lot of um, walking on the 4 by 4 tracks and maybe the roads, my feet were sore after 4 or 5 hours. So I could have maybe worn my slightly softer summer boots, but you know what, they came in useful for going over the Larry Gru and also in that section, if you've watched the video where the <laughs> it was the bog from hell, they did come in quite useful. Um, poles, these, are, these, are, these have been great. They're, I may have to get new ones because I did stand in them and bend the lower section, but these are Fiza and Everest poles. And I've been using these for years and years and years, and they're nice and lightweight, but I think I will need to replace these because I've bent that and I can't um, push this, the pole all the way down. But they were they were really useful. I'd so strongly suggest having poles, especially if you're doing going across bogs or river crossings with a big backpack on. It does help. The, I always take a du duvet jacket with me. Um, summer or winter because it can get cold at night especially when you stop and this is my uh, duvet jacket of choice this is ah uh, oh can't remember the name of it it's Keela which is a Scottish make and it's it's not got down in it I'm saying a down jacket it's actually Primaloft and apparently that fabric when it gets wet it retains the heat you don't lose the heat whereas down if it gets wet you're, you're going to get cold so I always take when a longer day treks I'll always take this with me because I know if it does get wet I'll still be warm which is, is quite important. Um, I said I was going from the bottom up, didn't I? So, uh, <laughs> jumping about a wee bit. Took some gaiters, which came in useful. These are just oh, Trek mates, I think. Yeah, Trek mate gaiters. Uh, I do have a pair of Rab ones, but they kept falling down. I think those ones fitted me better. Uh, trousers. These are my trousers. Yeah, these are my trousers here. These are great. Um, Jotner uh, Valley. Jotner Valley, V-A-L-I and I just love these, mainly because of the braces I love the, the brace system, it saves your trousers falling down a wee bit <laughs> the back and you're getting that wee bit of a gap between your um, trouser and your lower back where it can get cold so they're really nice and lightweight and, and very comfortable and the braces never come off there they are fantastic uh, I'd wear a base layer uh, t-shirt, just a thin t-shirt which had two or three with me to change um, along with the step one underpants, but I'll not show you them, but they're great. And then on top of the base layers, I had this thin mountain equipment. Um, very, very thin. Uh, what's it called? Oh, I don't know, it's made in Bulgaria. That's, what, that's all it says, but yeah, it's very, very thin. It's just slightly thicker than the sort of t-shirty base layer that I had on. So I had that on, and then my usual gilet, which is a, I've had this again for about 20 years. North Face Julie, I just like I just like that system because you have your core's a wee bit warmer, um, and you can get going. It, it means you're not changing and stopping and putting different layers on as much. It, it works well for me. Um, different different people have different ways of doing things. I had a bigger jacket. And this is my what is this one? Revolution Race um, jacket. What's this? Uh, I'll just try to see what the name of it is. It's not waterproof, but it's. Um, it's our mid layer, it's fine, it's quite nice. The, um, the hood comes right up and protects you. And then my hard shell was the mountain equipment. Uh, I think this is a Lotsi, um, and it's great, it's, it's very waterproof. I reproofed all the waterproof parts. I did have some Montane over trousers, which I've not brought out as well. I think I wore them on day two just to keep myself dry. And what else have I got? Had a few buffs, these are great, I love the buffs. Um, you know, if it's cold, I can I can wear it as a buff like so. 
down like that. And at night, I often just pull it up over my eyes, <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, I think the buffs are a great thing. And I'll sometimes wear it under the cap to protect my ears. I soak up the sweat and protect it from, uh, yeah, just protect my ears from the sunburn. So, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that was the gear that I was wearing. So that was, hopefully that's useful. So hopefully <laughs> this has been quite useful. So what else did I have? Um, some other luxuries is this is Flexdale pump, which I eventually <laughs> bought and it's been great. It's just a wee pump um, for pumping up the, the bag and it's great, especially for the bigger bags. The winter bag takes forever to pump that up and I can just pop this in. You'll have seen me if you've watched any of my videos recently um, talking about that and uh, I think there's a new version out but this one works fine. Um, it's been great. Just, yeah, there's not much to say about it. You <laughs> attach it and press the button and it does all the hard work for you. So that was a wee luxury. Um, the electronics I'm going to talk about, um, it kind of ties into the, the weight. Uh, a lot of people talk about lightweight and ultraweight. I don't think I've ever talked about it because I th <laughs> it can be a bit cheeky because the reason I say that, and I'm not going to tell you the weight of this stuff, I've told you the name, so if you want to do a comparison or whatever, go and check out their websites and and check out what weight everything is. But I, I never do that because the only time I've ever weighed my gear was um, when I was looking at camping stuff against camera gear. And the camera gear with the tripods and all my cameras uh, and the power banks and the extra batteries weighed oh, quite significantly more than my sleeping mat, you know, all the tent, all the camping stuff put together. The, the, the gear that I took <laughs> for the camera stuff was, was more... more um, it was, well, weighed more, it was heavier, so I think I'd be a bit cheeky to start talking about lightweight camping, especially as I don't really do it. I think if I was wanting to go lightweight, the first thing I'd be doing is losing a few uh, inches around my waist. That'd <laughs> be more important. But yeah, the camera equipment is more ex yeah, more expensive. It's more expensive, that's for sure, but it's, it's more heavy than all this stuff. Because um, I usually take two tripods, three cameras, and then things like, I don't know if I've put it in here, but all the extra batteries and power banks, uh, let's see what we've got here, cables, yeah, these things weigh a ton. Uh, I took two power banks with me to keep me going. Um, you know, you need that, especially for your, your phone and stuff like that. I always have a paper backup. Um, yeah, it's a wee, wee camera there, and I had extra batteries for the camera, which I'm filming with. Uh, we've got the wee uh, InReach Mini 2, which I thought was quite, well, was very useful, because I didn't have a phone signal for most of this trip, so I was able just to use the presets and just text my or send a message on this to my wife. I'm not I am not really bothered about this too much. It's just a safety thing. I'll use it if I ever need to hopefully I'll never have to use the SOS button. And just to send a wee message to my, my wife to say I'm okay. I'm not bothered about, you know, linking up with the app and being able to do loads of big messages. Um I've just got the basic plan on that. Um it's not cheap. Um I've got lights, different lights with me. <laughs> I had two or I think I had three headlights just in case. Uh, one failed. Um, so the electronic part of it does is quite a significant part of it. Um, in terms of you're thinking about weight and carrying stuff, it's um, it's worthwhile thinking about. So yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's the gear I took, and it's probably similar gear to what I'll be using. Um, all summer, every time I go out uh, wild camping. So I hope it's been useful. As, as I said, I, I don't usually do these sorts of videos. It's just because I had so many queries. Even before the the video from the five day trip from Aviemore to Perth, I'd done a few wild camps and I had quite a few requests just to say, oh, it'd be really useful to have a gear list. Uh, and then when this video came out, the, it just came out last two or three days ago. I've had about seven or eight across the different platforms requests to saying, oh, it'd be useful to know. So hopefully it's been useful. Um, I'm not a big gear reviewer. Um, before I had these tents, the scarp ones, I had some Euro hike ones which lasted years and years and years. If I find something that works, I tend to stick with it. Um, and as I said, there are there are stoves that I'm like, the, for instance, the jet boil stove I've had for a number of years. Um, and there are stoves I'm looking at, thinking, oh, that'd be really nice. But you know what? These work in saving money and sustainability. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that argument, but. Um, yeah, that's just the way. That's just the way it is. So, yeah, hopefully that's been useful for you. Um, I'll be back with another. If you just this is the first video of mine you've watched, they're not like this. I'll be back in the hill, out having an adventure. Uh, and if you did like this and you want to see more of this, you know what's in my day pack. 
um, I don't know, Crocs versus Saliwa <laughs> boots, let me know, because I could do them. It's a lot easier doing this, making a video like this, than it is going out, planning, going up a hill. These videos, this is taking me uh, a couple hours maximum, whereas, you know, the usual videos that you watch will take me, well, the day to do the trip, and then a lot of editing after that anyway. So I'm going to shut up. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Wednesday for another adventure. Right, now I need to pack all this stuff up and put it back inside. That's a bit I'll take the time. Right, see you later guys.